What is earnest money? Where does earnest money go? How does earnest money work? Hi, my name is Lydia Rowe, a realtor here in Tip City. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things living in the Miami Valley of Ohio. Today, I'm answering some questions I get all the time in real estate about earnest money. So if you're in the real estate market, or if you're simply curious, keep watching. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is earnest money? Earnest money is a deposit, some call it a good faith deposit, made by a home buyer to show their seriousness and commitment to purchasing a property. It's typically a percentage of the home's purchase price and is included in the offer when submitting it to the seller. This one's totally up to you, but there are some norms in the industry that usually are dependent on the area that you live in, the type of property you're purchasing, and the purchase price. In many areas, sellers would expect 1% of the purchase price in earnest money. In our Dayton, Ohio area, a flat rate of 500 or 1,000 earnest money deposit is more typical on residential properties. Commercial and luxury properties may require that 1% or more to secure an accepted contract and take the property off the market. So even though there might be some norms, this is one of the areas of the contract that is absolutely negotiable. If you really want the property, a higher earnest money offer is a stronger offer than a lower one. It tells the seller that you are absolutely serious about wanting the property and that you're not gonna just walk away for no reason or because of cold feet. If you're in a multiple offer situation, higher earnest money can make just enough difference to the seller to have them pick your offer over someone else's. Do I have to put earnest money down to make an offer? The answer is no. There are some offers made and some offers accepted with no earnest money involved. However, if you are the buyer, and you offer no earnest money, you're essentially letting the seller know you aren't so sure about the property and you don't wanna take a risk. And if you're a home seller and you accept an offer with no earnest money, you need to know that if that buyer chooses to back out of the contract, your only recourse is a lawsuit, which is expensive. I'll talk about consequences of breach of contract later. Now let's address the question, where does earnest money go? Once you provide this deposit, it's not handed directly to the seller. Instead, it's usually held in escrow account. This account is managed by a neutral third party, often a real estate brokerage or a title company. That brokerage or title company is completely neutral. Even if you as a buyer picked them, there's terms and conditions that they must follow. And another side note that's important for our area here in Ohio, even if the other party is the breaching party, you're not guaranteed to get your earnest money back. In order for the neutral party to be legally allowed to release the earnest money back to either the seller or the buyer, the seller and the buyer must sign an earnest money release form, giving them permission to do so. If there's not agreement between the buyer and the seller on who gets the earnest money, the money is held for two years by the neutral third party, and then it's released according to their specific terms and conditions. This is not a regular occurrence. Most of the time, the breaching party understands that they're forfeiting the, the earnest money by backing out of the contract and they're willing to sign the release. However, you do have the occasional disagreement where one party feels justified and the other doesn't. You just need to be aware that whatever you put up in earnest money could be held for two years. Moving on to the next question, how does earnest money work? Well, earnest money serves as a safeguard for both the buyer and the seller. If the deal falls through due to breach of contract by either party, the earnest money can be used to compensate the non-breaching party. Let's say the buyer backs out of the deal without a valid reason. The seller may be entitled to the earnest money as compensation for the time their property was off the market. Remember, when you put an offer on a home and it gets accepted, you're taking that property off the market. The earnest money is your good faith promise that you have done as much research as possible, as much as you can do ahead of time, and that barring any crazy unforeseen circumstances or problems, you will make good on that promise to buy their property. Things like the neighbors, the neighbor's dog, parking, the school ratings, crime rates, how much work it is to take care of that pool, the age of the home, finding a house that you like better, or just plain cold feet. Anything like that, that could have and should have been researched and thought about before an offer is made is not a justifiable reason to back out of a contract. If you as a buyer decide to back out of a contract for any of those reasons, it's the right thing to do to sign the release of the earnest money back to the sellers to compensate them. A house that comes back on the market is automatically looked at with skepticism by other buyers and their agents. They wonder what's wrong with the house. 
Plus, the days on the market keep rolling during that pending stage. So if you write an offer on day five of the house being listed, and then you terminate your contract on day 20, the sellers go back on the market with a disadvantage. So what is a legitimate reason for a buyer to back out of a contract? Let's talk about contingencies. It's crucial to note that the earnest money deposit is subject to certain contingencies outlined in the purchase agreement. These contingencies are conditions that must be met for the sale to proceed smoothly. Common contingencies include inspections, financing, and property appraisal. Let's delve into each of these. The buyer often has a period after the offer is accepted to conduct inspections on the property. These inspections might include a home inspection, termite inspection, radon testing, among others. If significant issues are discovered during these inspections and the parties can't agree on repairs or price reduction, the buyer might have the option to walk away and get their earnest money back. Financing. The buyer's ability to secure financing is a critical contingency. If the buyer is unable to secure a mortgage loan within the agreed upon timeframe, they can typically back out of the deal and have their earnest money returned. And the other one is appraisal. The property's appraisal value is another important contingency. If the property appraises for less than the agreed upon purchase price, the buyer might not be able to secure financing for the full amount. In such cases, they can negotiate with the seller or choose to withdraw from the deal and get their earnest money back. There's also an insurance contingency. This one hardly ever is used, but I did have one this year. You have a certain amount of time to check on the insurability of the home and make sure that you can get insured for a reasonable cost. These contingencies are essential protections for the buyer. They ensure that the buyer doesn't end up in a contract they can't fulfill or that doesn't meet their expectations. It's essential that these contingencies are clearly defined in the purchase agreement to avoid misunderstandings or disputes. Most parties should have a clear understanding of the conditions that must be met for the earnest money to be returned or for the sale to proceed. And again, even if earnest money is supposed to be returned, here in Ohio, you still need the sellers and the buyers to sign the release before the funds are dispersed. It's also important to note that the purchase contract will lay out certain timeframes or periods for this due diligence to take place. If you as a buyer fail to get the house inspected in the specific timeframe, for example, and find out later about a problem, it's too late. So make sure you hire an agent who understands all these things and make sure you understand the contract and the timelines and meet those deadlines. Now let's talk about consequences. One last thing I want to bring to your attention and many buyers and sellers do not understand is that earnest money is not the only possible consequence of a breach of contract. If either party breaches the contract without a valid reason, there can be other legal consequences beyond the forfeiture of earnest money. The non-breaching party might pursue legal action to recover damages, which could go beyond the amount of earnest money. For instance, if a seller backs out of a deal after accepting an offer and a buyer can demonstrate that they suffered financial losses due to that breach, they may seek compensation for those losses through the legal system. Now this is what we all want, right? And honestly, this is what happens most of the time, thank goodness, with earnest money. You close the sale, the property transfers ownership, and the earnest money is applied toward the buyer's down payment or closing costs. Let's go, that's the good stuff. So to recap, earnest money is a deposit that demonstrates a buyer's commitment to a real estate transaction. It's held in an escrow account and can be used to compensate the non-breaching party in case the deal falls. Remember, the specifics of earnest money can vary depending on your location and the terms of your contract. So it's always a good idea to consult with a real estate professional. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more informative content on real estate and homeownership and anything having to do with the Miami Valley of Ohio. And if you have any more questions or topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.